problem. All right. So this is all background. Let's get the problem out. Where does all the, the evil, all the disasters, all the cruelty, all the inhumanity of man against man, where does it come from? What's its origin? What's its origin? Why is it? Now we're back to that idea of the two openings in the heavens and two openings down into Hades. And then here is the place of judgment and from that of course we know that also some of those also go to the meadow to await rebirth. Now, he has a very interesting idea. Now, <laughs> watch this now. Here are the souls coming back from heaven. Pure now, right? Uh, purified. And so they come return. Time now for rebirth. Now, among the people here who have died, they are many men who have committed great and terrible deeds. Great, terrible deeds, monstrous deeds. What was their background that produced such characters? These are always the majority of them come just from one place. So they come from heaven. They said, they come from heaven. They come from, you see, they previously, to get there, to get there, previously they had to have a well-ordered life. And they had to have virtue to get up there, to spend, right, to travel around in the heavens. Right? They needed virtue, and it had to be by habit. Right, second age of habit. And therefore, during this journey up here, they were inexperienced with suffering. And therefore, you see, they got this state, a well-ordered state, and they got the kind of virtue that allowed them to gain access into heaven, but without philosophy. That's what he says, without philosophy. So it goes back to that sluggishness again. Goes back to the point. Mm -hmm. no. Without philosophy. He says, now he mentions one, one person that they knew, and he talks about how terrible a life he lived. And he says, well, that's nothing peculiar about that. He said, because this is just a, a kind of psychic balance of rewards and punishments. You just come back, you lived a terrible life last time, they get a good life this time. It's the wheel. It's the wheel. Right? It's the wheel. So then you get down into Hades, and you come back yeah. and make the, the transition. Yeah, and he says, hey, all the tyrants, all the tyrants were previously in the heavens. He said, because when you take a look at them, he said, notice what kind of people they are. They have to be very clever. They have to have good memories. They have to have good thinking. They have to have courage. They have to take all kinds of risks. They're the ideal type of man. They just chose the wrong life. Well, if they had all of those good qualities, where did they get them from? They must have then brought them with them from a higher life. The only problem was they chose the wrong kind of life with the qualities that they brought with them. So he says, look here. The majority of those who are in this class of people that lived very wicked lives were, were those, therefore, who were caught without philosophy. Now, what does that mean? Let's go see if we can get it a little better. What is he saying? He's saying, those people, you see, we might expect that those people coming back up from Hades may not have been purified. There may have been some residue of something they really hadn't paid off. No, they come. <laughs> the worst of us come from the heavens, not from unfinished, unfinished consequences of Hades. 
Therefore, suffering doesn't provide a basis for choice. And he wants to make this point very strong. He said, because there are many people, these are the wicked. He said, let's look at another group. Those who have suffered greatly. All right, here they are. Now he's Ur, and Ur is speaking at this point, and he says, he says, it's a strange, pitiful, and ridiculous spectacle to see what happens to these people who have suffered so much in their past life. Because when they reach out to pick a new life, they're guided by their suffering. They want to avoid suffering. And in that choice, they pick the worst life, or empty lives, or stupid lives. He said, and I have a couple of good quotes, perhaps I can give you one or two just to have some fun. And this is a section that goes from Orpheus to Odysseus. So he mentions all kinds of people. And uh, um, Orpheus is real good. He's got to go on for Orpheus. Ur saw the soul that had been Orpheus's selecting the life of a swan because from hatred of the tribe of women owing to his death at their hands he was unwilling he was, he, he was unwilling to be conceived and born of a woman therefore he chose a swan then he saw the soul of Thamorus choosing the life of a nightingale. And he saw a swan changing to the choice of life of man. Ajax, the son of Telamon, because the soul remembered the adjudication of the arms of Achilles, was unwilling to become a man. She chose the life of a lion. The soul of Agamemnon, likewise from the hatred of the human race because of its sufferings, chose the life of an eagle. He says, they're all they're ridiculous, oh, ridiculous, pitiful, because they don't understand something. That's what we have to figure out. Now, Odysseus is one of the great examples. So let me just, Odysseus, he says, Odysseus, it fell out that the soul of Odysseus drew the last lot. And he came to make his choice. And from his memory of former toils, having flung away ambition, he went about for a long time in quest of the life of an ordinary citizen who minded his own business. He found it with difficulty, lying in some corner disregarded by the others. But upon seeing it, he said, oh, he said, would have been the same had I drawn the first lot. And he chose it gladly. And the life of a private man, right, living simply, he said, that's the best life. So. Now, what does this mean? It means we cannot make rational choices here. Odysseus did. He's the only one in the whole story of the myth of Ur who did. So taken, therefore, as a whole,